Hey everybody, Tim Larkin. Today's topic is three-time kickboxing champion goes up against a sandwich press. See how it turns out. Now, before we get into the story, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not subscribed, uh, just take a second, go ahead and subscribe. And also, if you have any friends, any, any people that you know that really want good self-protection information, please share this channel. It's getting harder and harder to get this information out in this environment, and I really appreciate all of you helping us grow this channel. Now, to today's subject. Well, I always try to talk about the idea, the difference between violence versus competition, and not because I don't love competition. I love combat sports. I live in Las Vegas. I have a lot of friends that literally compete at the highest levels here in the UFC. Um, tons of them that are amazing uh, judo players and uh, jujitsu players. They're just amazing competitors. They're great guys. But what's interesting is oftentimes we make the mistake of thinking that equals violence. And what I try to show is that violence is a very simple skill set that anybody can use. And today I'm going to illustrate a really tragic situation that happened, but one that, you know, we can all learn from. So this happened in Australia in, um, I think it's 2009. This guy goes to prison, this three-time Australian kickboxing champion goes to jail. He goes to jail, he's caught up in a ring that was trying to import components for methamphetamine. First day is in jail, he gets challenged by some guy in the, in the yard, you know, that they're, they're going around. They have a scuffle. I guess it goes, you know, pretty hard. The kickboxer easily handles the situation, ends up, I guess, getting the guy in a rear naked choke, sits there, humiliates him in front of all of the other prisoners, and basically, you know, lets him know don't ever mess with me again. You're lucky I'm going to let you off this time type of thing. It got to the point to where the corrections officers actually got involved and they forced the two guys to shake hands. They literally you know, shook hands. He thought it was over. Well, it wasn't. Um, I, I, you know, what this, all this happened is in prison culture, especially not understanding what it's like to be humiliated in front of other prisoners, you can't let that go. What he also didn't know is the guy that he did this to is a violent murderer. He, he didn't even, he wasn't even supposed to be in general population. This is where they screwed up. They actually had this guy in general population. So what did he do? Well, he decided he had a really easy approach to this. He saw how good of a fighter this guy was and said, you know what? I don't want to deal with that. So what did he do? Well, he got a pillowcase and he got a panini maker, you know, one of those little sandwich presses. And he set up a situation where he was going to get his revenge. So let's go ahead and just take a look. Now, I, I just show this because I want you to see what the fighter looked like back in the day. You know, so you can see that. You see him with his hands raised and he was a very, very good fighter. This is what he looks like today. He's 51 years old. He has massive brain damage. Um, and of course, you got to love the Australian press served up in a salt sandwich. I mean, the Brits and the Aussies go back and forth with headlines. You know, I, I got to give it to the Australians this time. It's pretty funny. Um, but the situation, there's nothing funny about it. Now, I'm going to share the video with you. Now, the video is is closed circuit TV. It's not very, you know, good. I have had it highlighted so you'll be able to see the actual assault. But I want you to see the simplicity of what this prisoner did. You know, this is after understanding, oh, okay, I know this guy has really good fighting skills. But that didn't stop him. All it did was it had him say, okay, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to go for injury. I'm going to take this guy out. So I'm going to watch the video. And let's go ahead and start it. Now, again, it's grainy. Don't worry. It's highlighted. If you don't catch it the first time, there's a couple of highlights. So you'll see it. Okay. So he is just to stop it here. If you see, if you're looking down at the lower left-hand corner, there's a guy sitting with a baseball cap on. He's the guy that's distracting him at the table. The guy further away, you know, on the other, on the, in the other chair with his back to the stairs right now is the kickboxer. He's just sitting there. He thinks he's okay because he's sitting under closed circuit TV cameras. So he figures he's kind of safe, but what he's not watching is what's going on. The stairs behind him. The guy's running down the stairs with the pillowcase that has the panini maker in it. Okay, going down. There's your first hit. Okay, we're going to highlight that. That's the first strike. Hit him right square in the head. Goes down the ground. Comes in. Second strike. This is the one that actually took off part of his ear when he hit him. Okay, two strikes. That's it. 
it was all over at that point. Again, didn't have to deal with his uh, fighting ability at all. He just wanted to take him out. Those two strikes left him clinically dead. Now, he came out of the coma and he was able to survive. He still has brain damage to this day. In fact, they dropped all the charges against him because of the negligence of the corrections uh, officers at that particular prison by having this murderer in there. Now, the reason I show you stuff like this is not because I'm glorifying prison culture or I'm glorifying um, you know, a true criminal. That's not it. It's to let you know that it comes down to intent, intent to do harm. And when you are you know, put in a situation where it's your life is on the line, there are no rules. You're not constrained at this point, especially if you're a law-abiding citizen and you're you're facing imminent grievous bodily harm. Look at, you know, you look at somebody like the prisoner that did this, the murderer that did this, he just understood. He goes, oh, okay, the first time didn't work out so well for me. So the second time, I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to set this guy up. And it worked perfectly each and every time. So, you know, becoming a combat athlete, Becoming a three-time, you know, champion in kickboxing takes tremendous skill. Only a small portion of anybody that even gets involved in kickboxing will ever reach it to the competitive level, let alone the championship level. That is a rare person that does that. But again, what does competition have? It has rules. It has defined weight classes. It has a defined area. And it has a referee that will enforce the rules. And you're only having to deal with one person you know, on there. So you can have that focus. That's exactly what happened originally in the yard. It was kind of like him being in the ring. He had one guy to worry about. He gets the guy in a rear naked choke, humiliates him in front of everybody, thinks he sent a message to the whole yard, doesn't realize what he's dealing with. The other guy just uses pure intent, sits there, uses improvised weapons, takes the guy out, leaves him clinically dead. Just like that. So, what we could take away from this is, again, the skill sets of destruction are really simple. How do you, you know, how do you, you know, take, take away from this? You know, unfortunately, some of the best information on self-protection comes from the worst parts of society. That's why I show videos like this. The only difference is that guy had the intent to do harm. He just, he had no, no compunction. It was purely criminal. There's nothing for us to learn from that aspect of it other than if you're up against somebody that you think is bigger, faster, stronger, remember the assumptions I always make, you, you know, if we are going to be facing somebody, you know, any of my clients, I assume the clients are going to be multiple attackers. Those attackers are going to be bigger, faster, and stronger. Those attackers are going to have weapons. Under those conditions, you can use anything at your disposal to protect yourself. This is just another example of how quickly somebody with a high skill set was taken out with really a simple, low-tech approach. Again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Make sure you have your friends subscribe and keep sending in your questions. I really appreciate it. Uh, look at the links in, the, in the, the bottom to get more information. I would love to hear from you. And again, I can give you far more straightforward information offline than I can online. All the best.